you gon' call? Masquerade here with episode one of my movie reviews. Today's movie going up for reviewing is going to be Ghostbusters for the movie development of Ghostbusters. The concept was inspired by Aykroyd's own fascination with the paranormal and it was conceived by Aykroyd as a vehicle for himself and for his friend and fellow SNL Alunes. John Bel Belushi. I'm sorry if I mispronounced the last name. I'm, I do apologize. The original story as written by Aykroyd, Ghost Smashers. I like that name. Was very different than what would be eventually filmed. In that version, a group of Ghostbusters aha, would be traveling through time, space, and other dimensions, taking on huge ghosts. Aykroyd pitched his story to director and producer Ivan Rittman, who liked the basic ideas but immediately saw the budgetary impossibilities demanded by Aykroyd's first draft. At Rittman's suggestion, the story was given a major overhaul, eventually evolving into the final screenplay, which Aykroyd and Ramis hammered out over the course of three weeks in Martha, Martha's Vineyard, Vineyard's Bomb Shelter. Aykroyd and Ramis initially wrote the script with roles written especially for Belushi, Eddie Murphy, and John Candy. However, Belushi died of drug overdose during the writing of the screenplay and neither Murphy nor Candy could commit to the movie due to prior engagements. Rest in peace, John Belushi. I'm, once again, I'm very, very sorry if I so missed during filming During the filming process of Ghostbusters, they found out the name of the property was already in use by Filmations, obviously known by the um, He-Man and Masters of the Universe, Everybody on HeMan.org knows Filmation, um, the it, and Filmation called it the Ghostbusters. Like, Ghost and Busters was split. Was two words apparently, and Filmation used they had two apparently two scientists and a monkey or an ape or a gorilla. I don't know which one they called it, whichever whatever it was, but it was a kids action comedy mix show and the producers also insisted on getting the rights to the name of Ghostbusters from Filmation. So okay, so now for the casting history of Ghostbusters. The the role of Peter Venkman was written for John John B and but due to his death on drug overdose, the he was recasted or re audit there were auditions for his part for Peter Venkman. The potential actors were act well yeah. Uh, was Richard Pryor? Okay. And then obviously the one who got the person who got the role was Bill Murray. Uh, the character for Ray Stan well, the actors who it was written for for Ray Stans was Dan Aykroyd, and the one who got it was obviously Dan Aykroyd. So Dan Aykroyd made this part, this character for him, for himself. Winston Zedmore. Every time I say Winston Zedmore, I keep every time I say Winston's name, I keep wanting to say Churchill for his last name. I don't know why. Or how, but oh well. Um, Winston Zedmore was originally written for Eddie Murphy's, for his character, but due to prior arrangements, he could not be in it. And it was uh, the potential actors for Winston Zedmore were Gregory Hines and Ernie Hudson, 
And the one who got the role was obviously Ernie Hutchins. And Egon Spangler, it was, there was no official research that I found that said who it was written for, but, and it, so just left it as unknown. Um, the prior potential, haha, <laughs> potential actors, no research found on that. Um, but the, who got the role was obviously Harold Ramis. Lois, Lewis, ha. Lewis Tully was written for John Candy. Also, due to prior arrangements, he could he was not able to be in the movie. So the role was given to Rick Moranis, who was in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, uh, and a bunch of other Honey, I Shrunk whatever. Uh, Janine Melnitz was... It was just could not find any research on that so who was it was written for so the potential actor actresses were Sandra Bernardart if I mispronounce your last name I am very very sorry and the the woman who got the role was Annie Potts a gozer in form of Ivo Shandor was written for Paul Rubens. Okay. Potential actors was Anna Carlsy? Carls? I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce your last name. I, I do apologize. But the pers the person who got the role was Salvitsiva. I do I do apologize, I cannot pronounce your name. Jolven. Their first investigation is a haunting at the New York City Public Library, and after seeing some symmetrical book stackings, they encounter a ghost that runs them out of the library, also known as the Grey Lady. They decided that they would take matters into their own hands as they start a business named Ghostbusters, a professional parano paranormal investigation and elimination service out of an old firehouse using a 1959 Cadillac Miller Meteor ambulance dubbed Ecto-1 to get about around the city hiring Janine Malnitz to handle the phones Dana Barrett of 55 Central Park West comes to the Ghostbusters and asks for their help the Ghostbusters do a few tests to determine that she is crazy as she recounts as paranormal experience in her kitchen centers centering around the name Zool. Peter seizes the opportunity to get romantically closer to Dana. Ah, Peter. Peter, Peter, Peter. And goes with her to the apartment using the ghost sniffer. He checks out the place, finds nothing in the main room and the bedroom. Dana then directs him towards the kitchen where he finds eggs that cooked themselves on the counter, but gets no reading on the ghost sniffer, despite using it correctly. What can you do? Well, you never know if he was using it correctly. Meanwhile, their funds are nearly dried up eating a Chinese food dinner, Why? <laughs> which they ate very, very slowly. Janine gets a call with a serious client, and then she rings the alarm bell. We got one! I have a horrible voice at doing that. <laughs> uh, the Ghostbusters run and get dressed, and then leave in the Ecto-1. They show up as, at Sage, <laughs> Sage Wick Hotel, and the hotel manager tells them that they are having problems with a resident ghost. Following a successful test of the equipment, they split up to search for the hotel for the ghost. Peter finds the ghost, which then slimes him. Egon calls Ray to tell him that the ghost is now in the ballroom. They enter the ballroom as they attempt to capture it, and they destroy the room, and making a lot of noise. They're Ghostbusters, what can you do? They got proton packs on their back and you expect them to be silent? 
the, I think they're even louder than a leaf blower. The first capture is successful, and they find themselves an overnight success across both New York and nations. As the amount of calls grow, the team is required to hire a fourth member, Winston Zedmore. Once again, I keep wanting to say Churchill for some odd reason, and I don't know where Churchill is coming from, so... Yeah. An unwanted side effect to their, of their newfound popularity produces Walter Peck from the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA. He comes to the firehouse trying to inspect the storage facility, which Peter refuses to let him do. One night, Dana enters her apartment and is talking on the phone to keep her mother. To her mother, sorry. After the call, she gets grabbed by the claws that burst out of her chair. It's becoming more of a horror film than a cool movie. Jesus. She's taken into, into the kitchen where she becomes the possessed by Zool. Meanwhile, Louis Tully, another resident of the apartments, is hosting a party for the fourth anniversary of him becoming an, an, an accountant, when a dog also described as a bear and a cougar, okay, but in retrospect a terror dog, attacks him and chases him out of the building and to a restaurant where it possesses him. Peter makes a visit to Dana's apartment. He quickly realizes that he, she has been possessed by Zul, the gatekeeper of Gozer. Changed radically by her possession, Dana aggressively tries to dis seduce him but ends up growling fiercely and levitating above her bed in frustration after he repeatedly Re rejects her advances. And why would Peter do that? That's not the Peter we know. Lewis simil similarly <laughs> possessed by Vin's Clortho. Clortho. There we go. The key master of Gozer. Stumbles around S Central Park. He harasses locals until he finds a carriage horse and confuses it with the gatekeeper. When the coachman questions him, Lewis responds ang by angrily flaring his eyes red and growling at the man. Later the cops bring Lewis to the firehouse and ask Egon if he'd take him. As he is exhibiting strange behaviors, Egon recognizes that Lewis is possessed by Vin's Clortho, a.k.a. the Keymaster. Peter calls Egon to tell him about Dana being possessed by Zul, a.k.a. the Gatekeeper. It's probably just me, but every time I hear Gatekeeper, I think of uh, Power Rangers Mystic Force, that one at those two, that two-part episode, Gatekeeper, um, from Claire. Anyway. Walter Peck obtains a court order to shut down the containment grid and is unable to stop him. The team flees to the firehouse at the team flees the firehouse as the grid collapses, and hundreds of freed ghosts flood the city. In chaos, Zul awakes in her bed, and Vince Clortho escapes and makes his way to 55 Central Park West, where they unite with a passionate kiss. Okay, weird way of figuring stuff out and figuring who is who. Weird ritual. Yep. Peck orders the, the Ghostbusters arrested while the ghosts create panic across the city. While waiting in jail, the team recognizes that Dana's apartment building was a huge superconductive antenna designed and built expressively for the purpose of pulling in and concentrated, concentrating spiritual turbulence. The mayor orders the release of the Ghostbusters from jail, allowing them to get to work to prevent the potential catastrophe overriding Peck's demands. Assisting by the police and army, the Ghostbusters make their way to the top of 55 Central West, 
they are too late in to prevent the possessed Dana and Lewis from com completing the ritual for the coming of Gozer. As they open a dimensional gate at the top of the building, they are transformed into the Terror Dogs. Forms of their possessors, they take their positions beside, beside Gozer's temple. When Gozer emerges from in a female humanoid form, the team tries to shoot her with their packs, but fails to harm her. Gozer disappears and tells them to select the next form they, it, it will take. And though the team tries to empty their minds, Ray, the, the normal goofball he is, Ray is unable to. Ray thinks about the most innocent thing he could imagine, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. The team finds that a giant version of the Marshmallow mascot has begun to lay waste in the city as it makes its way to the apartments and starts to climb the building. Egon realizes that the only way to end the destruction is to reverse the particle flow through the gate by crossing the streams, resulting in total protonic reversal aka crossing the streams which would destroy Gozer and the inter interdimensional gate. The plan is risky at best but there is definitely a very slim chance of their survival. As the giant creature reaches the top of the building the team executes Egon's plan causing the gate to seal itself, creating an explosion and, bear and burning the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man away into a large amount of liquid marshmallow fluff. The Ghostbusters find that they have all survived and that Dana and Lewis have returned to their normal, unpossessed human forms. The team is cheered on as they leave the building and drive okay, away. Okay guys, so now it's your turn. Make sure to leave your thoughts and comments in the comments part below, whatever it's called, comment box below the video description. If you do want to see my thoughts on the movie, you can just, it'll be in the description uh, box below. You can just expand it and then you can read my thoughts. If you guys do not want to read my thoughts or hear about my thoughts, you don't even have to click on them. And it will also be up on my blog at piracemasqueradereviews.wordpress.com. And for, I do want to hear all of your thoughts on the movie Ghostbusters. You guys can do that in the comments below, or you can leave me a voicemail at 636-486-9976. And this is going, this is a voicemail only, so just leave a voicemail, tell your thoughts, and maybe in a few, um, Videos later, I will be compiling all of the comments together into one video saying viewers' thoughts video for Ghostbusters. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed my first movie review. Um, so till next time, I'm Pyrus Masquerade saying later days.